Hey, what's going on guys? Dustin Heiner here with Master Passive Income. And today we're gonna to talk about something that's not very fun, short sales and foreclosures. And what's the difference between the two, how to get out of them, what's what to do and all that sort of stuff because short sales and foreclosures, I'll be honest with you, I've done a short sale before, never done a foreclosure, but I've done a short sale before. And I know of many people that have done foreclosures, gone through the process. I bought many properties through short sales and through foreclosures. In fact, I make a lot of money and save a lot of money by buying foreclosures and short sales. Now, my name is Dustin Heiner, and I help people invest in real estate rental properties so they never have to work a job again, that just over broke job. And I have Master Passive Income and the Master Passive Income Show to help you to learn how to do that exact same thing. Now, today we're talking about short sales versus foreclosures. Now, I'm going to talk about the negatives or the downsides about for short, uh, short sales and foreclosures and hopefully help you to get out of them if at all possible. But then I'm gonna also talk to you as an investor, why I love short sales and foreclosures as an investor, mostly because I save a lot of money and I make a lot of money. Now, short sales. Short sales are different than foreclosures in a way where you actually work with the bank. You work with a bank on your mortgage and a foreclosure is they basically take the property away from you. So we'll pause everything right there and go right to the very, very beginning. You buy a property. Let's say you buy a house to live in. When you buy that house, you get a mortgage and then you buy the house you live in there and then you continually make your mortgage payments. As you make your mortgage payments, your bank says, hey, this guy's doing great. Let's keep him letting him live in the property. The bank has a lien. Uh, it's, a, it's a word or a term for a they tell the government saying, hey, we own part of this property basically, or we've given them money to live in this property, to own this pro property. If they stop paying, we can take this property back. And that's what happens when we stop making our mortgage payments or can't make the full mortgage payment. The bank says, you know what? You're not fulfilling your end of the obligation, the obligation to pay back the money that you borrowed. And so we have the only repercussion is for us to take the property back. Now, a foreclosure is different than a short sale. So let's go over what a short sale is. A short sale is when you talk to the company, the bank that you're working with, you've already got the mortgage, you've already been making your mortgage payments, and then you fall on some hard times. You know, sadly, um, I think for me, when I had my short sale, I had a couple of businesses that were doing really poorly and I did, we weren't making money in the business. Money was going into the business as opposed to coming back out. And I didn't have enough money to actually pay my mortgage. So we went through a short sale. What the short sale is, is basically you call up the bank and you say, Hey bank, I don't have the ability to pay the mortgage anymore. I need help. I need to get out of this property. Would you be willing to take less than is currently owed on the property for in exchange for you know getting out of this loan I'll give you a broad example let's say you buy a house for three hundred thousand dollars you get a loan for three hundred thousand dollars that's how much your mortgage payment is uh maybe let's probably like eighteen hundred dollars a month two thousand dollars a month whatever it might be so you're getting those mortgage payments you're paying those well but you owe three hundred thousand dollars after a year or so, it comes down a little bit. So maybe you owe like $295 or $5,000 and then you fall on hard times and you can't make your mortgage payment. You go to the bank and say, hey bank, it's a bummer, but I owe you $295,000 still and I can't make these payments. I wanna keep the property, but I can't. So I need to give you back the property and I am I would love to do a short sale. You talk to the bank, you say, would you agree on receiving less money for how much I borrowed and get me out of getting this short sale or getting get me out of having this property. So you would get, basically, you start from the very beginning, talk to the bank, say, is it okay if I go out and get offers from other people, from other buyers, and then you take less than what is owed? We don't know the exact dollar amount because you need to sell the property first or get a buyer who's gonna give you money. So the way it works is you go to the bank first, ask them, they say, Yes, we can look into it. Then you get a realtor. That realtor then says, let's put it on the market for X dollar, whatever you think, the highest you think you can get it for. And then let's say you get an offer. You get an offer at $275,000 and you owe two ninety five. dollars And there's, there's $20,000 difference there. You then take that agreement, that contract with the new buyer, you take it to the bank and you say, hey bank, uh, this is the best we can do. I don't have $20,000 to pay it off. Would you please take this in term uh, in lieu of um, getting a mortgage payment. And so the bank will basically be eating or be out that $20,000. And if they agree, 
then that's a short sell. You're shorting the total amount of money that is owed to the bank. So you owe 295, 295,000, but you're only gonna give them 275,000 because that's how much you're getting out of the property. So you're basically agreeing with the bank to sell the property for a lower price than what is owed. If they agree and they say yes, and you go through the entire process, you'll get a hit on your credit it won't be nearly as bad as if you go through a foreclosure. That's a much, much longer process, which we'll go through in just a second. But the bank is going to be basically working with you throughout the entire process of selling the property. You still have to do everything on your own. It's just that the bank is, instead of getting the full payment, they're accepting a lesser payment. Now, one thing you got to watch out for, though, is the banks may try to say, we're still going to come after you for the difference. You want to try as best you can to have them be completely fine with writing off the rest of that money. Let's say you still owe $20,000, but you want your best to work with them and say, I'm going to give you this property back in a foreclosure, or we're going to do a short sale. You're going to get 275,000, whatever the dollar amount is, but I need you to write off the rest of that loan. I'm not going to be able to pay it off. I just want to be free and clear. I want to be done with it. And they agree on it. You definitely have to get it in writing, but that's something that you need to watch out for is they could eventually come back, unless it's in writing, writing where say they, they completely forgive the rest of the debt, they could come back to you and go after you. And that's something that happened to me. They actually came back and said, we are going to collect on this. I, I think I owed like $100,000 extra because I bought really, really high and the market crashed and my business crashed. Everything was going bad. And so they wanted to come after me for $100,000, but I was really blessed to be able to work my way out of that um, where we agreed that I didn't owe any more and they just took the property and I got it in writing, so I'm completely absolved of that. Now, my credit quickly went back up. I think after, I think maybe a year to two years, my credit went right back up and I was able to buy another property. My business started doing better. Everything started doing better. So that's the short sale process is you eventually lose the house but you don't have that foreclosure on your, uh, you don't owe, own the rest of the, the bank, the rest of the money. Now, that's a short sale process, which is much more preferred. The way to get out of short sale, number one, you start paying your mortgage. You start paying your mortgage, you're going to be totally fine. Now, the other way, I'm going to give you a couple ideas of how you can get a short sale, get out of short sale. Number one, you can ask somebody else to help you with the mortgage payment until you start making money. You get, you know, get on your feet, start making more money. Basically, what all it comes down to is making that mortgage payment. If the bank gets their money, they're going to be completely happy and they don't care what happens to the property as long as they keep getting their money. And so as long as they get their money, they're not going to have the short sale. And another thing that you could do is try to cut back on expenses. Now, these are going to be easy things that you're already going to have thought of, but this is really what it comes down to. You need to pay your mortgage. And if you don't pay your mortgage, then you're going to go through this whole entire hassle and this whole entire process. So what you need to do is cut your expenses. Try to you know drive for Uber. Um, if you do anything else to create income to pay your mortgage until you get back on your feet, that's what you got to do. Work really, really hard. Now, let's move on from short sale. So you get the short sale. It's basically you're agreeing for a lesser amount. Foreclosure is totally different. You're literally saying, well, bank, I am absolutely walking away from this property. I don't want this property more. I don't want the headache. You deal with it. I'm giving you the property. You are now the proud owner. Proud. You're now the owner of this property that I am walking away from. And so as you're walking away from that property, they are going to actually put the title into their name. They're going to put it on your credit, your credit report. You're basically going to show you have a foreclosure. It's going to be looked really, really negatively. I want to say it's it's like maybe seven years or something like that before it really starts working out of your your um, your credit score. So it's really going to hurt your your position as far as your credit's concerned. But at the same time, you're losing your house and then you're basically getting all your stuff out and you're giving the property back to the, the bank. Then what the bank does is they go out and they try to sell that property on their own. Remember, short sale, you work with a bank. You try to sell it for a lesser amount. Foreclosure, you're completely out of the entire picture. You just walk away from all your responsibilities and say, bank, you take care of it. They go on the private market or they go to an auction. They go before the judge. In fact, I have a whole thing on how to buy properties from an auction on my site. I'll put that in the description as well. So you can have that. You can see how to buy properties from a, you know, distressed properties. Um, you can buy properties that are an auction at a courthouse steps. You can actually get really, really good, good deals doing that. And so what happens is banks, they take this property. It's now a real estate owned an REO. If you ever heard of REO, that's what it means. Real estate owned basically owned by the bank. And the bank is going to take it. They're number one, going to try to auction it. 
And number two, they're gonna put it on the MLS or the multiple listing service to be put out for everybody to actually try to put offers in and eventually sell for on their own. And so the foreclosure process is really, that's all that's gonna happen, you're done. But what's bad is your credit's gonna be drastically affected in a negative way. And it's gonna take you many, many years to build that back up. But then also when people or banks see a foreclosure on your credit, they're gonna say, hey man, this person, I don't wanna give them a loan because they're not gonna fulfill their obligation. So that's a huge drawback. Now, let's look at the difference between the two. You want to do a short sell over a foreclosure. And obviously you want to pay your mortgage as opposed to um, a short sell. But you could also do this where, let's say you owe $20,000. You can say, well, I'm selling it for this, and I'm also going to put in $20,000 myself because I just don't want the property anymore. And you're out, you're not doing a short sale. You're actually paying the mortgage off. That's another way to get out of it. Whole different than, you know, not a lot of us have $20,000 or more to pay off that difference. But that's another way to not have your credit get affected if you just want to walk away from a property, you know, sell it for part of it and then pay off the difference. But the difference between the two is your big chance of getting um, another property anytime soon is better due to a short sale. Like I said, within one to two years, I was able to buy next property because it kind of, it worked its way out of my system. They still saw that it was short sale, but they say, hey, Dustin's done a great job paying his mortgage, or not mortgage, um, all of his other bills, his credit cards and all that sort of stuff. And so banks will take a chance on you. So between the two, you definitely want to do a short sale over foreclosure. Foreclosure is definitely gonna be down the negative path. But here's the great thing, as investors, that, and everybody, if you are even thinking about, remotely thinking about investing in real estate, I have a link in the uh, description below. If you go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, I will give you my free course where I will show you how to find properties, how to buy properties, how to find money to buy the properties, how to make sure you manage them right, how to make $250 or more every single month from those properties. So get my course, masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, or it'll be in the description as well. So as you are thinking about investing in real estate, look to short sales or foreclosures as really good opportunities to save money. Now remember, when we buy properties, you, when you make money when you buy the property, you realize that money when you sell, just like if you are buying a stock. You buy low and you sell high, and that difference is where you make money. Same thing with real estate. If you buy it lower at a lower dollar amount, but it's worth up here, let's say you buy it for $80,000, I know there are properties that, that are worth $80,000. You buy it for $80,000, but it's worth $100,000. You make $20,000 in equity that goes in your pocket. Just like, give you a really easy example. If you're gonna buy gas, filling up your car, let's say you get it $2.56 a gallon, and you're like, man, I'm filling up for $2.50 a gallon. Well, then uh, a week later, it's $3 a gallon. And you still have $2.50 a gallon inside your tank. You're saving money because you're not paying $3, and so you've just filled it up. So that's what we're talking about getting the price lower with foreclosures and short sale, we can absolutely get the price lower because we're offering less, we're buying it for less. What's great is when we buy it for less, we have less of a mortgage, but we have more passive income because we, we that less money coming out into a mortgage payment is more money in our pocket because we have rents coming in. Let's say our rent is $1,200 a month, mortgage is like $850 a month. Well, that is a $450 difference between the rent payment and the mortgage payment at $850, but all your expenses, let's say you're up to you know, $1,000 total in all your expenses. Well, that's $200 that goes in your pocket every single month in passive income. So if you get that price down even lower, where you're paying maybe $800, that's another $50 in your pocket. Remember, your mortgage payment was $850, but you got it lower, so now your mortgage payment's 800. That's an extra $50 in your pocket. Or you get lower, you get a 750. That's another $50 on top of that. So $100 back in your pocket. Hopefully the numbers are making sense where the lower you pay for the property, the lower your mortgage payment is, which is less money coming out of your pocket, more money staying in your pocket from rents. So that's what I love to do, is I love to buy properties cheaper, fix them up, get them rented, and then make passive income every single month. And on top of that, I get the appreciation, I can fix it up and make it worth more. I have my tenants, they pay my mortgage for me, which is fantastic. I have tax deductions. There's so many great reasons to own real estate rental properties. And so for you going through this, if you're going through a short sale or a foreclosure process right now, it well, pause that. If you are going through the whole process of a short sale, try to do a short sale. That's the number one thing. If you have, if you're going into a foreclosure, try your best to go for a short sale first because that'll help your credit. Now, after you're past that, 
Now you're start, starting to think, you know what? I'm past that. I've made my mistakes. Now I'm going to actually start buying properties to invest in and buy. Start looking for short sales and foreclosures because, you know, markets, they up, ebb and flow. They go up and down. And as they go up, we watch for properties for that are going to be making us money. But as they go down, what's great is there's going to be a lot of short sales. It's sad to say, but there's going to be a lot of foreclosures. By that, where when that happens, we can jump on those properties and make a lot of money. So hopefully that helps kind of clear up that you want to short sell first. If you have to foreclosure last, because that's really going to hurt you. But then again, as investors, we buy these properties. So you guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys have a fantastic week at start investing in real estate rental properties. Get my free course. I want you to go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course or see in the description below. Get started investing in real estate rental properties so you never have to work a job again. All right, guys, again, Dustin Heiner with Master Passive Income. I'll see you soon.